Hello and welcome Indian pharmaceutical company. Dr. Reddy's has a lot of plans ahead. They include both the global generics market as well as the Indian domestic market. To understand this a little better and see what lies in store, I'm joined by Mr. G.V. Prasad, Chairman of Dr. Reddy's Laboratories. Mr. Prasad, thank you very much for speaking with us. So uh, let me ask you a couple of questions uh, pertaining to, of course, uh, the pharmaceutical industry, but in the context of two things. One is innovation in general mm -hmm. and uh, two, innovation in the context of process, in, uh, process innovation, right, okay. which is something that India has been uh, mm -hmm. beaten up for a long while, but that seems to be changing. So how would you uh, look at the whole issue of process innovation today uh, mm -hmm. or reverse engineering as it was once called uh, in the context of what it has delivered and what it is likely to deliver in coming yeah. years? So let me uh, start with the difference this has made to the world, mm -hmm. not just India. So if you look at the industry, we mm -hmm. started with reverse engineering the active pharmaceutical ingredient, the right. API or right. the bulk drug as it's mm. called. Mm. This is basically synthesizing a complex molecule, mm. a known molecule through, uh, through processes which don't infringe existing IP. Right. So you really have to navigate around IP and launch the product at the time at which mm. the, process, the product patent expires. Mm. But there may be other process patents taking this further. This is something India is really a world leader. Mm. If you look at the production of APIs, the export of APIs, the drug master files, mm. India is the undisputed world leader of supplying synthesis-based APIs to the world. Today. Right. So it's a pharmacy to the world. Okay. Yes. Mm. This has happened. Mm. The next step is companies went uh, forward, forward integrated into generics mm. and sold both branded generics mm. in markets in emerging countries as well as unbranded generics. Mm. The entry into unbranded generic markets is very easy. It is mm. a B2B business. Mm. If you have the right product at the right time with the right AP, with the right cost structure, you can break it. Mm. Branded business takes building sales forces and mm. all that. Mm. So if you take the unbranded uh, generics as a proxy for innovation, mm. the API is an important component. We've mm. conquered that. Now, if you look at the incremental number of applications coming from India into the world markets today, mm. we are clearly the leader for incremental product Mm -hmm. uh, expiries. Okay. There are still U.S. companies which are dominant. There's one Israeli company which is very dominant, and there are any, any prominent examples in terms of uh, uh, new APIs. Then new uh, generics. Almost, if you take every, if you take the number of para four filings, mm. which is a proxy for the kind right. of yeah. uh, process innovation companies bring to market. Uh, U.S. is number one, mm. obviously. Mm. India is number two. Mm. There's no other country which even comes close. Mm -hmm. And uh, this shows how much progress we have made in finding non-infringing processes and bringing them to the market, challenging patents, creating our own IP and all that. Right. So in my view, we've conquered the API opportunity. We are well on our way to conquering the generics opportunity. And this has made a significant so, impact, yeah. not only to export earnings from India, but actually making the product more affordable in countries like India, Africa, South Africa including the US. For mm. example, there's a generic, Fonda mm. Paranox, which is mm. an injectable generic. Mm -hmm. It's a 64 step synthesis. Mm. There's no generic in the world today except Dr. Eddie's. Mm. And we supply this to the US, and as a result, the healthcare system must be saving hundreds of millions of dollars in the US. Mm -hmm. So Indian innovation is playing a major role in making medicines affordable in India, in the developing world, in Sub-Saharan Africa for AIDS medicines mm -hmm. in the world today. And right. I, I'm really proud of all these accomplishments. So what's the flip side? I mean, the flip side, for instance, is that the US FDA is far more uh, uh, strict about uh, drugs which are manufactured in India. The inspection levels are tighter. Yeah, there is some noise about uh, regulatory failures of some companies and have there been some high profile failures. Sure. But that is part of the growth pro growing up process. Mm -hmm. You know, manufacturing, We've started as a company, as a, as a country, you know, with very limit, li limited resources mm -hmm. and limited presence in the market. Mm -hmm. We are growing up. In this, as we are growing up, as we are scaling up, we haven't fixed all our problems. Mm -hmm. What used to be fixed through close supervision of managers now has to be done through systems and processes. Mm -hmm. And we are in that process of getting to maturity, mm -hmm. strengthening our uh, system, strengthening our knowledge overall improving manufacturing management. Mm -hmm. That is going to happen. And you know, believe me, India is not the only one country with have, which has regulatory issues. Mm. There are m many more regulatory issues in the world out there. Mm -hmm. So I think our Indian media has hyped this and made this a bigger mm. issue than it actually is.
Okay. So let me ask you about the Indian domestic market. Okay, yes, we'll come back sure, to the sure, sure, global sure. generics in a moment. Yeah. How is that looking to you, particularly for uh, the year ahead, uh, in terms of uh, either the specific verticals or okay. uh, sectors or uh, in general? So from a Dr. Reddy's perspective, yeah. we are not a major player in India. Yeah. In fact, we are highly dissatisfied with where we are. Mm. And uh, it's a something of a sore point for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, it is a, a, a small percentage of our overall business and it is not satisfactory. But the market itself is growing. Mm -hmm. There are policy challenges. This uh, price control is a big challenge. Somewhere they moved away from cost-based fixing through competition-based fixing, which is somewhat positive. But there are a lot of things which, which we damage ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, Taking a 50 paisa product and making it 40 paisa, I don't know who's be, who's going to be benefited by that. But that's going to af affect the economics of a right. organization. It may not affect the consumer. Hmm. So affordability is not thought about. Relevance is not thought about. Just blindly applying the law is, a, hmm. is happening on the price control front. Another policy headache that we have is about regulations on clinical trials. Hmm. They which made it so difficult to which do. Which is currently suspended for yeah, all practice. Yeah, it's just impossible to yeah. do clinical trials in India anymore, mm. which was a good business and opportunity. And you have the courts intervening as well. Yeah, so. it's largely a combination of courts which are not very well informed, mm. the activists who are, you know, with very little knowledge, and the government reacting to whatever they see as an issue without thinking through how it is done mm. in other countries and what, what we can learn from that. The re clinical trials are the heart of pharmaceutical development. Mm -hmm. We don't fully understand the body so well that we can simulate it and develop a drug. We have to test drugs. Mm. We have to test them on animals, then we have to test them on human beings, and we have to see the response. That's the only way today, foolproof way to see whether a drug works or not. And if we have handicapped ourselves so badly by not allowing trials to be done in a smooth way, Mm -hmm. This is really so you said price control is a is a concern. Uh, clinical trials or the lack of them right now is a concern in India. Yes. What are the other areas that? Uh, on the policy front, I think if these two are addressed, mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of innovation. In spite of all these constraints, Indian mm -hmm. industry has done a great job, I think. Okay. And any specific thoughts on what you might be doing in the domestic market? In the domestic next year? market, I think, is a very interesting market. It's a very mm -hmm. competitive market. There's severe competition for every point of market share. Mm -hmm. uh, from our company's perspective, I think we need first management attention on the Indian market, which mm -hmm. we have now. Mm -hmm. We need to bring more innovation to the market. Just getting a pill and along with 30 others and uh, trying to sell it is not going to cut it. Mm -hmm. We have to offer greater value. So we have to become more, um, I don't like to use the word innovative, it mm -hmm. is overused, mm -hmm. but I, we have to bring services and products which really make a difference to the patient beyond the pill. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are thinking about and we are trying out a few things. But, but is that sort of general, for instance, would it be in like cardiovascular or central nervous? Chronic, uh, chronic uh, customers happen to be higher value customers. Mm -hmm. So it's good to be in chronic, but we can't ignore the, you know, other, other aspects of the business also. Okay. And coming back to the global market, so what's your prognosis for 2014 and what? The pharmaceutical industry is not very dependent on macroeconomics mm. or, you know, trends. <laughs> there is, there are a lot of uh, challenges we face as a, as a, you know, species. Mm. Con cancer is still not conquered. AIDS is still out there. Uh, there are many diseases which have unsatisfactory solutions. Affordability is a big issue. Access is a problem in many, many, many countries. So collectively, all this have a lot of uh, challenges for the pharmaceutical industry to tackle, and growth will continue. Okay, and and the I mean, world is aging. The yeah. Western world is aging. They will require a much higher amount of medicines. So the prognosis is positive, which is not good overall <laughs> <laughs> in terms of health. Right. But uh, the opportunity is large. Right. So uh, the <coughs> other inevitable question that most people ask you, so will Dr. Reddy be Dr. Reddy or will it be an arm of a large uh, global multinational? I'm actually tired of answering this question. Yeah. <laughs> um, Which is why I said it's inevitable. <laughs> uh, the um, <coughs> no, because, uh, but my the sense company is has no plans to sell anything. Sure. Hmm. The company has uh, plans to acquire and build. The company has a clear strategy. We made some very interesting strategic moves in the last mm. two years. 
so i don't see anything on the horizon yeah no and the reason i'm asking is also i mean the same question asked one year ago may have a, had a different relevance and the year before that may have a different relevance maybe today it has less relevance yeah. well not really i think mm. we've been consistent in uh, our thinking mm. we want to build a global leader from india which is innovative which adds to the world's solutions for, for healthcare and which makes a difference to patients lives and that continues we don't see ourselves being acquired by somebody we we have many parts to us mm. we have a api business we have a branded generics business we have a unbranded business we have a biologics business and then we have we are working on innovation finding new therapies i i don't know if a company with so many different facets will be attractive to any one single company correct companies acquire more pure play companies because mm. they are missing this or they are missing that yeah. so we are a combination of so many different things now and i don't see a large company being interested in all right. these components okay so last question uh, one exciting project that you would be uh, looking forward to or uh, spearheading in the next year or so within dr reddy's i Pro don't project know. or product or yeah so i'm very excited about um, two things really one is our biologics business mm -hmm. i think our partnership with merck serano is going to start mm. uh, showing up uh, in the clinical trials that we do so targeting the us and europe through our partner that's one great exciting mm. thing that's happening we are also be, we've also been working on incrementally innovating existing molecules and making them better some of them should start uh, going into phase 3 trials this year okay. these are two things which i'm excited about on a non product side i think um, we are trying to reinvent the company in terms of making it more patient centric rather mm -hmm. than molecule centric <laughs> so historically we've been a very science focused company focused very much on technology on products on molecules we are trying to move away and become more patient centric in mm -hmm. our way of thinking and as a result we also are on the process the process of branding our company a little differently so yeah. that's a project which will probably come out when you say branding you mean the name or is it the appearance not the, the name but many things around it okay including the experience the communication the logo those kind of things and and that's in the next few months i think it will be launched next year okay so congratulations and all the best for that thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for speaking with us thank you thank you